Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We're so glad you're joining us today for Jesus the Healer. Welcome. We just love getting to take the time that we spend with you and thank you for taking the time to be with us. Get your Bible, get a notepad, get pen, pencil, whatever device you want to use and let's study along together. And not only that, let's use our faith. Amen. Amen. Let's, Amen. let's say, you know, I'm going to hear answers today. Yes. I'm going to hear something I'm going to be a doer of today. Right. And so we've been looking at this, this wonderful force and this flow of righteousness because righteousness is what Jesus made as a free gift to every one of God's people. And so um, Jesus made this statement. He said, the kingdom of God is in you. And then Paul gave us even more details in Romans chapter 14, verse 17, when he said, the kingdom of God, it's not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, mm -hmm. peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And we're going to get to all of those, righteousness, peace, and joy. But we've been camping on the last several episodes on this thing of righteousness. And the Holy Ghost just keeps having me go after it and go after it. And we're saying some things repetitively from previous episodes, but I tell you, that's how this gets in you. Yeah, it's to hear it over and over and over. You know, there's nothing original in the devil. He's an imitator of how God operates with distortion. So he mimics God in a distorted manner. And we know from the word that faith comes by hearing and hearing. So it's, God shows us it's by repetition. Well, the devil adopts that too. Mm -hmm. And repeatedly he will try to bring wrong thinking, wrong believing, wrong things to you. Well, we just, we're more repetitive with the word. That's right. Amen. Yes. And so that's why I just keep saying some of the same things over and over. I want to take my time and be able to say them in, uh, to you in a way that lands in you. Because Amen. when it gets in you, then it's going to work for you. Yes. Amen. I wanted to read some things that um, I read this a couple of episodes ago, but it's so rich what E.W. Kenyon said. Um, he wrote in one of his books, he said, to most of us, what we were before we found Christ so dominates our minds, so rules us that we forget what we are now in him. Mm -hmm. We belittle our redemption and we magnify our failures. How many of you know that's got to flip? Yes. That's got to change. Yes. And he says, with many of us, our weakness is ever with us. We have forgotten that he is ever with us and in us. If we would persistently fix our thoughts upon what we are in Christ and what Christ is doing for us at the right hand of the Father, it would lift us out of weakness yes. and lift us out of failure into his strength. So set your mind on things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. How many of you know that's true? Yeah. We have to constantly make sure we're staying on the positive side of, what's God, of what God's doing and not on the negative side of where we missed it, what we've done wrong. Um, I want you to turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. I'm going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. Paul makes a statement here that I want you to see. Um, he writes, lest Satan should get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now look at these words. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. How many of you know that Satan lost the advantage over our life when, when we received Jesus? Right. He lost the advantage. Well, how many of you know he's ever trying to get the advantage back? over our lives. So he's constantly looking for a way to do that and he employs devices mm -hmm. 
So he says, we're not ignorant of his devices. He's trying to get an advantage through these devices. So we're not ignorant of the devices. And um, the word tells us, Paul is writing and he said this, he made this statement. He said, neither give place to the devil. So how can the devil get an advantage if we give him a place? He can't take a place, but we can give him a place. If we gave him a place, we can take back the place we gave him. Amen. And many of the times we have fallen prey to the accuser, the brethren, by listening to his accusations against us. Um, Every single one of us, um, we need a Savior (laughs) From from what our sins, our faults, our failures, our misses. But the devil, the accuser, the brethren, takes those places where we've missed it. And he tries to ever replay those before us, Mm -hmm. tries to hold us in the cycle of those sins, Mm -hmm. those those mistakes, those failures of the past. If we entertain that, he will gain the advantage of us. Mm -hmm. I said he will gain the advantage. Um, Accusations are a device that he uses to try to gain that advantage. We must be skillful at holding to our righteousness in the face of his accusations. We have to be skillful that no, the blood of Jesus has cleansed me of that because he's not going to accuse you with something you did not do. He's going to accuse you of some place where you missed it. He's going to try to replay that. But we have to be more skillful with staying in our righteousness than swaying into the the condemnation that comes from his accusations. Amen. We answer those accusations by talking our righteousness. Now, did you get that? We answer Mm -hmm. those accusations he brings by talking. No, I'm righteous with, I'm right with God. The blood of Jesus has forgiven, has cleansed me. God's forgiven me and I'm right with God. You have to answer that with it. Amen. Amen. Uh, We also know this, that any accusation of guilt, once we've, once we have confessed, we know what 1 John 1, 9 says, that if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So once we've confessed it, we have to, by faith, believe that we're cleansed, we're forgiven. Isn't that right? And so once we have done that, once we have acted on 1 John 1, 9, any accusation that the devil would bring against us is therefore now a false accusation. That's right. Why? Because it's gone. It's cleansed. Even though it once was part of our life, once it's cleansed, it's no longer true. So he brings accusations against us that are false. And so we are to say that's a false accusation because that's cleansed from my life. That no longer applies to me. Amen. Amen. That's called being skillful with your righteousness, being skillful in who you are in Christ and what he made yours. That means we have to be skillful at letting it go out of our thought life. Now that take, you you have to pay attention to your thought life, Mm -hmm. that you're not letting yourself go back and rehearse where you missed it of what Jesus has cleansed you from. Once you've confessed it and he's cleansed you, uh, you make sure you don't entertain that again. But listen to this. If you don't want to entertain where you missed it, you can't entertain where somebody else missed it either. Well, there's a winner right there. (laughs) Now I want you to turn with me to Philippians chapter three. In verse 13, and I'm going to read this passage out of the Amplified Classic. So if you have a device there that lets you pull up the Amplified Classic, uh, maybe you'll follow along with us in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. This is Paul writing. Now we know a little bit of Paul's history. Paul was zealous for the things of God, but he did not have proper understanding of things. Right. That he began to, to attack God's people. Remember before his own conversion. Right. As a Jewish Pharisee, he, began, he was attacking those who were born again. He was imprisoning them, imprisoning them. He was persecuting them and consenting to the death of some of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, So when he got born again, that's what his past was. But notice with Paul, he gave us something that is a window into how he handled his own life. Philippians chapter three, verse 13, Paul said, one thing I do, it is my one aspiration, forgetting what lies behind 
and straining forward to what lies ahead. Now notice this. He's talking about two different directions, behind mm -hmm. or ahead. Right. If we're going to hold to what's behind, we're going to not be able to reach as we ought into what's ahead. Right. If we don't let go of wrong thinking, if we don't let go of the things of the past, it's going to affect our advancement. That's good. It's going to hold us back. Yes. So Paul said, one thing I do, it's my one aspiration, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the supreme and heavenly prize to which God in Christ Jesus is calling us upward. So notice this. He said, really, uh, our thoughts of the past, our memory of the past is going to keep us from pressing on. Yes. That means that many have stopped in their spiritual advancement mm -hmm. because they haven't properly let go of what's behind. Why haven't they? They're not righteousness conscious. Mm -hmm. They're sin conscious. So they're, they're aware of where they've missed it instead of being aware of what Jesus did for them. Yes. Now that's critical yes. to the life of faith. Amen. It's critical to receiving from God. We have to be more, we have to be occupied with what Jesus did for us mm -hmm. and rather than what, what we did, what we yielded to of the tempter that was against us. Amen. Amen. Now, I want you to see this, that Paul's talking about advancement. I press on. I press on toward the goal. How many of you know with, with God, everything is advancement, yes. increase, yes. more, promotion. Yes. Right. It's always in the advancement direction, right. the forward direction. So in this passage that we read, there were some things that we see that has to happen for us to advance. Number one, he said, I forget what's behind. He, so he had to forget how he persecuted oh, yes. Christians. He had to forget that. He had to forget what their faces looked like That's right. Right. as they were suffering. He had to forget that. Mm -hmm. Not making light of it, but he put more, more credibility in the blood of Jesus That's than right. what the blood did for him. Yes. Number two, he had to strain forward. To strain, that means you have to reach beyond where you now stand. Mm -hmm. wow. If you have to, you know, don't, we, we don't go beyond what God's telling us to do, but I tell you what, what God tells us to do will put a stretch on you. Yes. <laughs> It'll put a stretch on you. Yes. You go past what's convenient yes. into okay. what's inconvenient. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Another Amen. thing to move forward is you have to press past opposition. If he mm -hmm. said, I press, he's got what something's trying to hold him back, opposition. Mm -hmm. You have to get past opposition. Yes. Past opposition of the memories. Yes. Past opposition of past faults, failures, weaknesses, and then you win the prize. Yes. Amen. Amen. Um, I want to again go over to Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14. And I want us to read it again. It says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, Look at this. What that blood will do, it'll purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So his blood purges our conscience. Yes. One of the things that Dad Hagen taught us is our conscience is the voice of our spirit. Right. But as I was reading a commentator on this passage, he said in, with this word conscience is replay of the mind. Uh -huh. This thing that constantly comes back up and cycles through the right. thought life. Mm -hmm. He said the blood of Jesus will purge that replay of the mind. Why? So you can serve the living God. Yes. So we can do what Paul said so we can keep pressing oh, forward. Right. Yes. Um, I, I told this in a previous episode, but I want to tell it again because it is so, it's such an important illustration and critical thing for us to understand. We apply the blood of Jesus by faith. Yes. Yes. We, apply, we, we say, I take the blood of Jesus. I receive the cleansing blood yes. that cleanses me from sin, mm -hmm. cleanses me from my past, cleanses mm -hmm. me from my faults, failures, my wrong decisions. Yes. See, you apply the blood by faith. Well, how do you release your faith? Through words. Yeah. So we have to speak words of what that blood does for us. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, even if you've never been born again, those are, those are words that you can receive Jesus by. I receive the cleansing blood of Jesus. Amen. Right there, born again. Right. <laughs> that I receive Jesus as my Savior. He cleanses me yes. from my past. Um, so in, in applying the blood of Jesus, you have to believe that it does what you say. Yes. It cleanses what the Word says. Mm-hmm. 1 John 1, 9, it will cleanse us from, he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He does that with the blood. Yes. Um, as we were saying in a previous episode, because this is so important, we hear so much of it today with PTSD. Mm-hmm. Um, this happens with military men. It happens with people who have had traumatic things happen in their childhood, mm-hmm. in their past, in certain relationships, and it cripples them from going forward. Yes. What will happen? When something difficult of our past happens, the devil wants to energize that. He will try to spend that, bring that, bring that to us repeatedly, and he'll energize it. And people say, well, why don't you just forget it? Well, sometimes you have to have divine help because it's, a, it's, a, it's an evil spirit that will get involved. And he'll energize um, things that troubled you. And so thank God the blood of Jesus is enough to deal with oh, that. Yes. Amen. Amen. But I was, a pastor and I were talking about on one occasion that passage in Hebrews nine fourteen that says that the blood of Jesus will purge your conscience or your replay of the mind from dead works so that you can serve the living God. He told me about a man that had been in his congregation, a military man that, um, never grew spiritually, never developed spiritually. He had come back from when he served in the time of military and he had great uh, mental distress Mm -hmm. from it. Mm -hmm. Couldn't sleep, couldn't really function right. And uh, he just never made advancement in his spiritual life. And he ended up at the time of his death, a fellow congregation member out of that same church was with him. And he later told the pastor, he said, when, the, when my brother, the military brother, he said, when he died, he said, I know this, that Christians go up when they leave their body. Their, God receives their spirit. Yes. They, their spirit leaves their body. They go up. And he said, so I kind of looked up as a knowing he was, he was ascending to heaven. And he said, and when I did, he said, God allowed me to see into the spirit realm. He said, I actually saw his, his spirit lifted up out of his body and I saw it going up. And he said, when I saw it going up, I saw something fall. And he said, it fell off of his head. It was on his, it, like uh, a half helmet or a half mask mm-hmm. that went across the front of his, that went across the, his face. And he said, and when it fell, he said, I looked inside this mask and he said, it was like a video playing. And he said it was video of past scenes of his life that the devil was replaying continuously. And he'd put that on him and held that on his mind, on his thought life to where he couldn't get away from it. Well, I'll tell you what could have gotten him away from it. The blood of Jesus applied. The blood of Jesus applied. But see, he didn't know that. And so he lived with that troubling his mind. That could be somebody watching today. Maybe you've been in a situation that has caused some traumatic replays of the mind. You try to get past it and you think, well, I've got to talk it out. Nope. You just got to apply the blood. (laughs) Amen. By faith. Let's do that right now. I want to pray with those of you and those in the studio audience, they'll pray with us and just say this after me. If this, if this is you say, Pastor Nancy, my mind is harassed, troubled by the past, things of where I've missed it, how I've done things wrong. The devil's tried to accuse me. He's trying to get the advantage over you. But I tell you what, Jesus keeps that from happening. Amen. So just pray with us, with your own mouth. Say this, say, Jesus, I thank you for your blood. It's an all conquering blood that no matter what comes against me, the blood of Jesus overcomes it. So I apply the blood of Jesus to my mind. I am forgiven by that blood of sins, faults, failures, weaknesses, 
and wrong decisions, and I will no longer yield to, to guilt, shame, condemnation, or anything else that puts me down. I say the blood of Jesus cleanses me right now. I'm clean right now. I'm righteous right now. And Satan, I refuse to take those thoughts and I say they fall in Jesus' name under that cleansing blood and they exist no more. And I'm free right now. Hallelujah. I tell you what, you have to on purpose apply that blood. Amen. Amen. Why? Because these things come to stop your spiritual advancement. Amen. It's so you can't go further in what God has for you and in the plan of God. Amen. Amen. Um, I want to, um, I want to read to you. Let me see. I want to read to you in first Corinthians chapter 16, first Corinthians chapter 16 in verse nine. First Corinthians chapter 16 and verse nine. And I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Translation. Paul is writing and he says, for a wide door of opportunity for effectual service has opened to me. A great and promising one. And there are many adversaries. Now notice this. He's saying I'm at a wide door of what? More. advancement, Mm -hmm. promotion, more ministry. But notice what's also at the door, adversaries. Mm -hmm. What are they trying to do? Block his advancement into more. Mm -hmm. So when you're at a season of advancement, when, when you're at a season when it's time to be promoted into more, greater revelation, greater anointing, greater opportunities of ministry, know that one strategy of the enemy is to try to bombard your mind with thoughts of the past, Mm -hmm. sin consciousness, condemnation, trying to make you mindful of what you've done wrong so that you draw back from that place of promotion God offers you. That's That's one of the strategies of the enemy. Mm -hmm. He's looking to gain the advantage. We don't give him that advantage. Amen. Amen. We hold to the blood. I said we hold to the blood. Why? Because the devil devil knows that faith won't work right in a condemned heart. So he tries to hold you in a place of condemnation. And condemnation will rob us of miracles. You go to receive a miracle. You go to receive a healing. And how many times the devil will try to replay something of your past where you've missed it, what you've done wrong to try to, if I could say this, make you think you're disqualified from your miracle. And that's not true because the blood qualifies us. I said the blood qualifies us. Now go with me, if you would, to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And I'm going to start reading in verse 21, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, and we're going to go on into chapter 6. We're we're familiar with this verse. It reads, For God has made Jesus to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Mm -hmm. Another passage calls that righteousness as a free gift from Him. So we are made righteous. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now look at verse one of chapter six. We then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Basically what this is showing us, if we're going to be a co-laborer with God, we have to stand up in our righteousness. Because those who are not aware of their righteousness, don't hold to their righteousness, are not skillful in walking as a righteous one, the devil will always push them back Mm -hmm. into sin consciousness, therefore keeping them from being as effective as a co-laborer with God as they should be. These are strategies of the devil against your life. 
God doesn't withhold anything from you. God's not mad at you. He makes the blood of Jesus at your disposal so that you can go on free and clear and spot free and labor effectively with him. Going into more, moving into more and advancing in your own spiritual life. Amen. Hallelujah. And then Ephesians 6, 14 says, having on the breastplate of righteousness. So we have to have it on. That means don't ever take it off. (laughs) Don't ever lay down the consciousness that you are right with God. You say, well, Pastor Nancy, I missed it. Then repent. Mm -hmm. Repent and then then be cleansed of all that unrighteousness again. Amen. Amen. We don't have to hold out against the devil. Mm -hmm. He has to hold out against us. We're the ones that are righteous as long as we keep holding to the righteousness that Jesus made ours. Amen. Amen. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Well, it is one of the greatest privileges of our life is to get to be on the Victory Channel and minister to those of you who are watching. Every programmer who is on the Victory Channel is there at the invitation of Brother Copeland and Kenneth Copeland Ministries. The reason is, is that they are the ones, the partners of Kenneth Copeland Ministry pay for all the airtime. As a programmer, I don't pay for any of the airtime. Now you think what a gift that is for our ministry to come into your home. And it is such a high honor that we get to do that. It's hundreds of thousands of dollars that they sow into our life, into our ministry, and into your life. And so I'm going to ask you that if you're not already, I invite you, pray about becoming a partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Do you know things you hear, the word you hear taught on this channel is a matter of life and death to to people. Um, You don't know how many times, being 24 hours a day, somebody gets up in the middle of the night and they're able to turn this on and they're able to hear the word of faith taught. They're able to hear answers and truth and help for their life. And you don't ever know, they, that may be you in the middle of the night. Sometime you may, you may need to be encouraged yeah, yes. and you can turn on the Victory Channel. So I invite you, if you're not already, pray about becoming a partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministries. What a blessing it is. And to do that, if you want to sign up to be a partner, go to kcm.org and just follow the prompts there and it will lead you into how to sign up to be a partner. But until next time, we want to remind you, Jesus is the healer. God bless To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In this book by Nancy Dufresne, Peace, Living Free from Worry, she teaches how to close the door to worry, fear, and doubt. Order now at DufresneMinistries.org. We invite you to join us for our annual prayer conference here at World Harvest Church in Marietta, California, April 4th through the 6th. We would like everyone attending to pre-register on our website, DufresneMinistries.org. Come expecting God to do great things. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.